So I've been recording some data with the DI Fluid Omni for the past um, two weeks. And I wanted to talk about workflow because um, I, I thought it was interesting. I've been taking a lot of measurements uh, and waiting until I have enough to or I feel comfortable doing some analysis. And I also want to be able to compare the Omni to other coffee color meters. So the Omni has two functions. One is a coffee color meter, and the other function is a particle distribution analyzer. And it operates in the near IR and the IR. Um, so uh, what I did is I, I've been taking a measurement before I um, grind the coffee, and then I've been taking a measurement after I grind the coffee uh, for color. And then I've been taking um, measurements for the particle distribution. So this is me just hitting my grinder vigorously. Um, I haven't gotten into using water droplets as frequently as I should. So I still have to worry about some retention, especially this um, coffee is this Robusta from Chromatic Coffee that I've had for a few months now that it just, it always has a lot of static. And yet I still haven't learned the lesson of just adding a little bit of water. So I, um, I'll do a measurement here first on the beans. I, I have extra beans sitting around, so I just pulled from the beans. And um, it's interesting to see how the beans differ from uh, the coffee grounds. And uh, this display, uh, it, it, it cracked when chipped, but it has a, a little display cover that it came with. So it was fine. It's still been plenty usable. Um, and it's fast. Uh, the battery lasts quite a long time. I think the battery has lasted me a week of taking multiple measurements. So it gives you the, um, the, the average number and it gives you a distribution of um, 10 increments. Uh, so it goes uh, minus 10, minus 20, and minus 30 off of the, the average, and then plus 10, plus 20, plus 30. Uh, off the average. Um, so it's an inter interesting way to see the color analysis. Um, rather than, I mean, one number is nice, but having a distribution because it's, you know, there's really a, a few numbers uh, uh, in there. So when I do my puck prep, I do half the puck first, I distribute and tamp. And so after the first tamp, I've been, uh, that's when I've been um, collecting the measurement. And what's nice about the Omni is it fits right on a 58 millimeter basket. So um, I don't have to uh, put this into the separate uh, cup that came with it. So again, when you test it, there's usually a shift up in lightness. So this is a lot lighter. That's why I want to compare it to a, um, a more expensive one. So the benefit of this as just a color uh, measurement tool is that it, it it has, uh, it's a lot cheaper than what's out there. So currently, if you want some color, color metric tool, you will spend uh, a few thousand dollars. Um, and this will cost, I think it's like $900. So it's far cheaper. And the fact that it also does a, makes a particle distribution is very interesting. So assuming those are both accurate or accurate enough um, to be actionable, you know, like, doesn't have to be super accurate as long as you can use it for your business. Um, so I don't know how accurate it is yet. Um, I'm, I'm still doing tests and, and looking at repeatability and how, um, you know, because as long as the, the samples are, are repeatable, then it's easy to calibrate towards other things. So uh, I lock in the Porta filter. And I let it sit for five minutes to do my thermal pre-infusion. And then I, I've been, it comes with a 164th of a teaspoon. So a very small amount of teaspoon, uh, which is too much. Uh, actually, you need really half of this. So I've been taking half and uh, I take half out and then I will distribute the rest with a brush. And I've been comparing brush to one of the features that's on there, which is if you didn't distribute this, it'll do a little buzz sound like a speaker and it will, um, that will distribute the, the coffee.
but I don't know how well it does. And I use a brush on my, on my, um, in my own method. Um, so, and this distribution will give you a few bins. It'll tell you like a rating of fine or not fine or whatever. And then it'll give you a few bins and the average and the standard deviation. Um, so I've been collecting both of these shots. So I, I, I clean this off and I put the big clump, does the buzz, collect another measurement. And uh, I'll be comparing the two to, to see, you know, how close are they? Because it might be that it, it's close enough for most people to get an, an idea of where your grind is and, and being able to dial in your grind. So one of the later experiments I want to do is um, using multiple grind settings and seeing how the distribution changes, which is a pretty straightforward experiment to do. Um, and... Uh, the only problem is it's you're only getting between 400 and maybe 800 particles max without them clumping together. Um, so in my own uh, tests with uh, using a, a larger board of around the size of a piece of paper, um, I get like four to 10,000 particles. Um, so uh, there is some issue on accuracy you know, if, if you're really looking for an accurate curve, you may want to take a bunch of samples and, and merge them together. So I haven't done that uh, yet because I'm waiting for an update to firmware that allows me to uh, pull the raw data because I'd rather use raw curves compared to my own raw curves and then compare it to my own method. So that's uh, coming once I get the, um, the raw data. So then I pulled my shot as usual. Um, this is a ramp bloom with a long 30-second uh, pre-infusion and then, uh, or sorry, 30-second bloom and then a um, long infusion because the infusion is at uh, 0.5 milliliters per second. I also sped up this uh, shot recording by a factor of two just to get through it faster because there's not much information aside from, yeah, it's a pretty good shot. Um, I measured uh, TDS and extraction yield afterwards and um, it worked out fine. So, um, and then I move into the next part of my routine. So here I measure the uh, extraction, or I measure TDS and then calculate extraction using a spoon. I do cold, um, or sorry, extract cooling, extract uh, cooling, cooling extract. So the sample is pretty cold. Uh, there's there's not much worry about the sample being too hot. This is also DI fluid. I should note DI fluid sent me both of these to test. Um, they didn't ask me to do anything, but they know that I'm a data person and I'm testing and qualifying these pieces of equipment to see if uh, if I like using them. Now the DI fluid uh, R2 I I very much like and I use it all the time for my shots. Um, I have a bunch of data on that. But back to the Omni. I took this and set it on top of the top of the puck because I found out that it's reading color. So why not test the color of the top of the puck and the bottom of the puck post shot? Does this tell you any extra information outside of extraction yield? I don't know, but I collected the data so I could find out and I used the uh, porter filter to tap out the, the puck very cleanly. Uh, the portafilter I use doesn't have a spring in it because I do all my uh, prep work outside of the portafilter. But no judging if you do the prep work with the basket in the portafilter. So you can see the bottom of the puck. Um, the bottom of the puck, this fits beautifully into the Omni. It's great. So you even have to tap the Omni a little bit to get it out. But I get some nice measurements from both. And uh, more data will be coming soon with some analysis. Thanks for watching.